everyone and welcome to science class. Now, let me see the mad scientists in the room. Anyone else here think that science is as cool as I do? Okay, I see you and I'm with you, but we aren't learning about science just because it's cool. We're gonna learn about how science can help us understand God. In particular, we're learning about how God is three in one or triune. It's a concept that we call the Trinity. The Trinity means that there's only one God, but he has three equal persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. So there are a lot of different ways that we can try to explain this. There are some symbols that we use, but some honestly work a little better than others. Our mission today is to do a couple experiments to see which symbol meets all the requirements to properly explain the Trinity. So I want to show you our lab report and what is required. So number one, the symbol must show that there is only one eternal God. Number two, it must demonstrate that the Father, Son, and Spirit are all God, but distinct persons. And number three, it must explain that each person of the Trinity is equal and shares the same divine nature. All right, are you ready to get started? Because today's experiment topics are fire and water. Nothing makes a dynamic pair like fire and water. But first, a pop quiz. Let's see if you can call out the perfect pairing for these items. So don't be afraid, shout it out. Cake and ice cream. Yep, you got it, you nailed it. All right, peanut butter and jelly. Exactly. All right, here's your next one. Spaghetti and meatballs. Nailed it. All right. Batman and did you say the Joker? If you did, I see you. The answer is Robin. Okay. How did you do? Let's get our experiment started by talking about specifically fire. Fire's crazy. When you think of fires, you might imagine giant forest fires, and today's fire is gonna be a little bit, little bit safer, a candle. This candle is a symbol used for the Trinity because it's one object with three parts. It gives us a flame, the light fills the room, and then there's also heat, making the fire hot. Another way to look at it is flame, light, heat, or source, beam, heat. Or like when it's dark outside and you shine your flashlight, there's the source of light, the beam of light, and the heat if you touch the bulb. So heat is caused by friction when the atoms get all sped up. It's like when you rub two things together. So here's what I want you to do. Take your hands and I want you to put them together like this. Okay, now what I want you to do is rub your hands together really, really fast. Okay, keep going, keep going really, really quickly. Are your hands getting hot? Good, that's heat. So the question is, does this fire from this candle meet the lab requirements that we're gonna look for for a good symbol of the Trinity? Well, let's look at our lab report. Number one, there's only one God. I guess there's only one flame, so that, would be a check. Number two, the Father, Son, and Spirit are all distinct persons. Well, the fire is like God, the light is the way that Jesus spreads God's love, and the heat is like the Holy Spirit, changing our hearts. They're pretty distinct, so that seems right too. And then number three, each person is equal and the same. Unfortunately, no. These three parts are made of different things. The light is made of photons and the heat is the movement of atoms and they're just not the same thing at all. The three parts of God, however, are made of the same divine nature, which is ultimately love. So it looks like this experiment failed to completely show what the Trinity is like. But before I move on to the water experiment, do you wanna see a really cool science trick? Watch this. Whoa! Wow, pretty cool, right? 
Okay, let's see if the water experiment can explain the Trinity better than the fire can. So these are my supplies. My favorite water, honestly, is bean water, meaning coffee bean flavored water, so basically coffee, right? So I take hot coffee. You can see the steam that's gonna come off of this right when I pour it. And I'm gonna pour it over this cup of ice. Now, hopefully you're gonna see that as the ice starts to melt, the coffee is still steaming. So you can see now that the water can have three forms. Solid, that's the ice. Liquid, that's the coffee. And gas, that would be the steam rising out of the cup. Now, I think coffee's pretty delicious. So water can be ice, liquid, or steam, but it's all still water, right? So let's check our lab report to see if this meets the requirements. So let's start with number three this time. Each part is equal and shares the same nature. I would say check. It looks like all three pieces are made of the same thing, H2O. Number two, the father, son, and spirit are each distinct persons. Check, I mean water, ice, and vapor, three distinct things. Number one, there's only one eternal God. Okay, now this is where our symbol starts to fall apart. The cup of water can't actually be ice, vapor, and liquid all at the same time. So using this to explain the Trinity makes it sound like God turned into Jesus, who then turned into the spirit, but all three are eternal, meaning they always exist together at the same time. And water can really only be in one place at one time, and God can be anywhere. We can't really contain him in a little cup. So while it might be hard to explain the Trinity with symbols, God shows us what this looks like in the Bible. When Jesus was baptized, we see all three members of the Trinity at the same time. Let's check it out. God has always existed. He has no beginning and he has no end. The triune God made of love was present together at creation. God is infinite. The Father spoke. Jesus was the Word and the Spirit hovered, breathing life into the world. Together, they brought light into the darkness. Humans chose to live outside of God's light. We call this sin. Sin keeps us separated from God because darkness cannot exist in the radiant light of God. God loves us and chose to rescue us from our sin. 2,000 years ago, Jesus became a human and lived with us. Because he was God, he did not sin. He perfectly fulfilled every law, shining God's love brightly in the world. Out of obedience to the Father, Jesus chose to get baptized. In baptism, we go under the water to symbolize dying to our selfish desires, and then we come out of the water, symbolizing washing away of our sin to a new life with God. When Jesus came out of the water, the Father spoke from heaven saying, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Then the Holy Spirit came out of heaven like a dove and landed on Jesus. At this moment, the Father, Son, and Spirit showed us the Trinity in all its forms. God is triune, three in one, Father, Son, and Spirit separate and holy, but equally divine. At Jesus's baptism, we hear the Father, God, speak, and we see the Holy Spirit coming out of heaven. Wow, so while all of these symbols, fire, water, and more, give us a general idea of what God is like, they don't fully wrap up how awesome our eternal triune creator really is. So you may be wondering, what does all this stuff about the Trinity actually mean for you? I mean, will it help you pass tomorrow's science test? Well, maybe not, but knowing God is always with you wherever you are can give you comfort while you take that test. Also, knowing that God is triune is valuable because it shows us the love of God. 
The eternal Father has always loved the Son and found joy in Him. The Son has eternally received this love. And it's all made possible by the Holy Spirit who is in us too. And this love flows around and around and God created you and God created me out of the overflow. So when you believe in the Son, Jesus, who died and rose again, the Father forgives you and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. You can also know that He's always with you. You are never alone. So whether this is your first time learning about God or you're 100, my prayer is you'll take all of this love that God has poured onto you and remember that this week. God is always with you and He loves you so much.